Today I played a match of 10 games against a national master and he kicked my ass. That is not a lie. I played 10 games. I lost nine of them. I almost won one game because he'd missed a tactic or just missed a move I did in general. It ended up becoming me fully winning and then I threw the game away. But I drew the game somehow because there was a timeout. He had like point nine seconds left on the clock and no increment and there is it was one move away from mate and one and yeah it was a good game um it was a lovely game i got to learn some things obviously when you play against someone who's you know rated it's always good to take advice from them when they give you advice <laughs> but he was a 1900 rated player um i played in a five minute I looked up five minute rapid um, five minute blitz games with no increment that are unrated, just to just to try and do well um, before I played a game. But I've lost I lost like every single game I played, so I'm glad it's unrated because yeah, my road to 2000 Elo would um <laughs> I'd be like two rated right now. Unfortunately, losses happen. It's a thing in chess. Today is probably not my day for chess, but. I guess it was in a way, but yeah, he he did a lot of tactics. Um, I know a good amount of theory as well, so I feel like that kind of threw him off. Because not every day, like an 1100 player knows like a lot of theory, and so yeah. Um, as you see, speaking of theory, we had eight book moves apiece. This is the Kara Khan Tartakower variation. I learned this from Gotham Chess himself in his course in the Kara Khan. I recommend it um, if you want to learn. Some moves, I did buy it. It is what it is. So yes, he has the white pieces. I have the black pieces. This is match number, th this is game number three. So uh, E4, E5, I mean, I mean not e E4, C6, uh, D4, D5. And he does this move here. And the target tower take it, or the, you know, this is like the main line it can lead to. Um, I turned it into the target tower. Cause, so when you, when this, Knight is here, you know, take this pawn, they take back, and you can go here, they run away, you drop back, they can push a pawn, and you do this, and then this is all theoretical moves, and yeah, this is all theory. Th that is a lot of theory I just gave you right now. That is a one line in the... Um, in the modern variation also there is this line where they bring both the knights out this is a little tricky this is the classical variation he actually mated me within like five moves in one of the um in one of these games just because i forgot my lines um yeah i should i should have pushed e6 because he went right here with that that knight and he can't do that obviously in that position so anyway back to the tartakower variation like i said e4 c6 d4 d5 knight c3 takes takes and now knight here and they take take with a pawn they get the knight out you bring the bishop out they bring the bishop out you castle they castle rook goes here on this open file and the whole point is to rotate this knight rotate the knight to f8 or to uh g6 so i rotate the knight and now we have a game on our hands he's starting to push on this side of the board and yeah just starting to bully me and so i get my knight over here and he develops some more and i push this pawn i didn't really know what move to do the computer says here is the best move i was just like uh i don't know is i was thinking maybe i could hop over here and push hop the knight back somewhere and then push up this pawn um let's just do a stupid move here Let's just do this, and then maybe I'll hop around, and maybe I'll do this. I don't know. This is what, kind of what I was thinking, but it wasn't really. It's not really beneficial because I have these major gaping holes on the, uh, you know, the position, and I could simply just, I don't know. I could simply if um, just lose the game on the spot, it's just mate and like a couple moves. Well, let me, um, yeah, it's just mate and a couple moves. So. It's important to not open up positions that many squares around your around your king side. So I don't know why I did this move, and I had this double these double pawns, and maybe I was just trying to take away some squares. But it is what it is. So they go here attacking me. I push this pawn up. 
computer wants me to do queen here and do some funny business on this diagonal. I did not do that, of course, and I pushed the pawn. Now I have these double pawns here, but it's kind of beneficial because the knight can't move around and yeah. I go here trying to do a trade. Bishop takes was a better move. Um, I was expecting something like this. That sort of line did not occur. So they go over here and I bring the bishop back for some reason. It still wants him to go bishop e6 just to, you know, do some stuff on the diagonals. Just get my pieces developed because this bishop is still not developed. And so I bring it back. They bring this bishop back and they missed a tactic here. They missed queen b3. Queen b3. Oh, so yeah. Okay. So if I move this, I lose a pawn. Yeah. Okay. So I missed the tactic as well. So the tactic was for me to go here. And they'd have to go there, I'm assuming, to keep it secure. So we both missed tactics. Now they have a battery, but they're staring into a pawn. And it's kind of, def it's pretty well defended. The, the computer still wants me to go here. Um, I don't know why, per se. I feel like that's just a worse position. Rook wants to play a rook e2. That is such a weird. That is so weird from the computer. Computers can defend like crazy. Nonetheless, they take. Um, I go over here trying to defend this pawn. And they go over here attacking the bishop. And I push over here with the pawn to. Now it's not going to be pieces taking, it's going to be pawns taking. And so they just move the rook to the center of the board. I go over here, best move, try and do promote this bishop trade and get them out of my position. And they were, um, I was eyeing this pawn. If they were going to go here, I couldn't have really taken it. If they did a waiting move, I could have just taken the pawn. It's, it's losing. Rook e d1. Oh, so now, yeah, it's doubled up. So I see. Okay. So that, okay. So bishop trade occurs. They push the pawns. I bring my rooks to the center of the board and they rotate this knight around trying to kick me out. And I, ro I rotate my knight around, opening up this file for the um, rook to take. I take back and now this knight is hopping around like a little bunny rabbit, little horsies just dumping around, doing all sorts of fun little tactics and move and all fun little move orders. I bring my pieces back. There are, all my pieces are just on <laughs> the eighth and seventh rank. And yeah, it's not fun, but nonetheless, I move my knight, they take, I take back, and they push here. I I don't, I don't know. Um, this is where the game got a little complicated. I was like, danger levels, I'm going to danger level this guy by taking this, and he's going to take back. And then I am going to do like a move, let's just do knight d7. And... I realize how that can now be a losing <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> that could be devastatingly losing very quickly. So that is what was missed. Um, fortunately for me, when I took here, he, I guess he would like pre moved it. Um, I get, I don't know what he said. I surprised him when I took with, I took the, the knight and the rook. I was confused. Um, so he took the bish, the took the knight and I took the rook, obviously. And now he has a queen and a bishop, and I have a rook and a queen, and we're just gonna do some moves. And over here, we just I'm, they're setting up some batteries. I give a check. They hop over here. I give another check, and they block with the pawn. And I was trying to think of a way to mate this guy. I was I in my mind I was like I'm gonna win this game. I'm so close to winning this game, and if I do that'll be awesome. And yeah, so I bring the rook back, attacking the bishop. They attack me. I go, back, I go back over here and they move around and I go over here trying to do some sort of back rank -ish thing and they take the pawn. I give him a check. King starts to run. I force a queen trade and a queen trade happened. So now I'm just pushing some pawns trying to scoot over and attack these pawns over here and I bring my king. King is brought and yeah, we're just doing some trades here. 
And as you see, the time is winding down. This is a five minute game with no increment. And so the time is winding down. He has 37 seconds and I have 53. So I give him a check and I bring my king and they attack the pawn. I don't care about the pawn. The pawn dies. And so now I'm just pushing P, pushing P. Now he has 26 seconds and I have 30. And yeah, he starts pushing this H pawn and I am just so dead set on capturing this pawn here and promoting to a queen i completely did not give a singular shit about my bad a singular crap about um this h pawn over here so he just proceeds to push the pawn and now he just pushes it again and i take the pawn and he makes a queen i don't know i don't know what i was doing and i could have gone back um because i obviously lost my rook there and yeah it was as you see the time is winding down i'm pre-moving with my bullet skills and trying to just do a bunch of things to make maybe you maybe i can flag him <laughs> so i'm just moving around he's trying to mate me and it's not working out he's trying to find the mate but it goes down to the wire he has 2.8 seconds i have 2.3 2. 2. Point, i mean i have eight and this is where the game was drawn now, I go to the corner here, and it's still mate in one, but he doesn't have enough time to make the move, so I don't understand how it was a draw. It said it was a timeout. So, if it was a, it said timeout or insufficient material, but there's clearly enough material on the board to mate the guy. I mean, to mate me. <laughs> Literally, the next move is just checkmate. Like, no matter, like... Unless he does like this, then it's a stalemate. But I don't know how it turned into a draw instead of giving me the flag victory. Maybe it's just title player, whatever. But uh, yeah, I almost beat a national master. I lost or I drew the game, but I almost lost because I'm stupid. I was so tunnel visioned and dead set on me just pushing up that, that pawn and getting that pawn and making a queen. I completely neglected this little Harry the H pawn over here. And yeah, it could have cost me the game, but like I said, I played 10 games, I lost nine. This is the only game I got close to doing anything. And yeah, it was fun though. Uh, talked to the guy, he was a nice guy, he told me some tips and tricks. And yeah, it was nice. So I don't think he'll be watching this, but thank you Mr. Lawrence Epstein um, for playing a, playing a little match with me and teaching me some stuff. So yeah, it's been your boy Nick or Jonam. Let me pull up the full screen over here. There we go. But yeah, it's been your boy Nick or Jonam. If you enjoyed, let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, peace.